Do you want to be less stressed with a better work-life balance and more time to spend on hobbies or with the family, all while still getting paid? Or perhaps you would rather not have to work at all? Surely the less time you have to spend working, the better. Oh, and do I need to mention the environment benefits as well. It is, well, it's the gift that just keeps on giving. Let me explain in a bit more detail. There was a study run between 2015 and 2019 in Iceland. The trials run by Reykjavik City Council and the national government included more than two and a half thousand workers and that amounts to about 1% of Iceland's working population. A range of workplaces took part including preschools, offices, social service providers and hospitals. Many of them moved from a 40 hour week to a 35 or 36 hour week. The highlights of the study are, well, the trials were an overwhelming success and since completion, 86% of the country's workforce are now working shorter hours or gaining the right to shorten their hours. Productivity and service provision remained the same or improved across the majority of trial workplaces. Worker well-being dramatically increased across a range of indicators from perceived stress and burnout to health and work-life balance. The trials also remained revenue neutral for both the city council and the government, providing a crucial and so far largely overlooked blueprint of how future trials might be organised in other countries around the world. And this is a view that is starting to gain traction now, with the UK forming the Flexible Working Task Force, Spain announcing trials, Japan having run a short trial in 2019, and even Unilever is running trials in New Zealand at their own expense to get more data. So it really is starting to feel like an idea whose time has come, and it may well prove to be merely a few steps at the start of a journey to a future of much less work and much more recreation, relaxation, and entertainment. Excellent. Excellent! Indeed, just this year, a report commissioned by the Four Day Week campaign from Platform London suggested that shorter hours could cut the UK's carbon footprint. Their analysis showed that shifting to a four day working week without loss of pay could shrink the UK's carbon footprint by 127 million tonnes per year by 2025. This represents a reduction of 21.3% and is more than the entire carbon footprint of Switzerland. It's equivalent to about 27 million cars. I'll link the report in the description so you can read it at your own leisure. Well, with the future looking more and more like a place full of artificial intelligence, robots and automation, many of the jobs we see around us will disappear. The list of tasks that they can do at least as well as us, and sometimes even better and far faster, is growing longer day by day. Should we just recap the last decade quickly? You may remember some of these milestones. 2011, Watson wins Jeopardy, the game show based on general knowledge. 2014, facial recognition surpassed humans with an accuracy of greater than 97%. 2015, AlphaGo wins Go and beats the world champion. Easily. Only to be destroyed by its successor less than a year later after teaching itself how to play from scratch. The Go world champion has now quit saying AI cannot be defeated. He felt like a child against a master. 2016. Speech recognition surpasses human accuracy when transcribing, a 0.4% error rate compared to humans at 5.9%. In 2017, Liberatus wins a poker tournament. AI surpasses humans at visual intelligence tests. It can solve logic puzzles simply by looking at them. And in surgery, a flesh cutting task, an autonomous robot surgeon beat human surgeons in clinical accuracy. In 2018, Alibaba's AI outscores humans in a Stanford University reading comprehension test. After answering 10,000 reading comprehension questions, Alibaba's AI scored 82.44, just above the 82.304 that is the average score by humans. 
LawGeek's AI beat human lawyers at reviewing complex legal paperwork. The humans took 92 minutes on average and scored 85%. The AI scored 95% and took 26 seconds. AlphaFold has taken protein folding to new levels faster than ever and solves problems that have been around for 50 years. In 2019, DeepMind AI surpasses humans at spotting issues in medical scans from eyes to necks and breast cancer. It was at least as effective as two doctors working together in tandem double checking each other. In 2020, an AI just beat a human F-16 fighter pilot in a dogfight, five rounds to zero. And then we have GPT-3, the Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, number three. It's a language-based AI. It is a model that can perform reading comprehension and writing tasks at a near human level, except that it has seen more text than any human will ever read in their lifetime. And it can perform everything from across varying categories and industries, from productivity and education to creativity in games and programming. And we have all seen Boston Dynamics with their robots doing everything from parkour to dancing. And now Tesla is bringing us self-driving in cars. But the new boundaries will be for us to take our unique human skills and build on them. Such as our creativity, intuition, emotional intelligence, foresight, empathy, inspiration, fine motor control, manipulation, and our ability to take a widely variable set of scenarios and adapt to them almost instantly. And perhaps we will have more time to use for leisure and creative learning, time to socialize and enjoy pastimes, rather than working at set times, doing set jobs, just to well, pay the bills. Hopefully a universal income of some description with less need for expensive healthcare and everything democratized and made easily affordable will be the future that we get to enjoy. So hold on to your seats because the transition is only going to get faster from here. Let us hope it also gets better and better. So do you enjoy your job or is it something you just have to do? How much do you work? Is that by choice or by necessity? What would your ideal scenario involve? Why not let us know in the comments section below? I would love to hear your thoughts on the subject and hit that like button to show your support and help this fledgling channel if you would be so kind. It makes all the difference, you know, and subscribe if you've not already done so. And whilst you're here, why not try this video on the decade of disruption I see coming? You can either love it or hate it, but you can't ignore it. Or if you've seen that one, why not try this one instead? Anyway, until the next time, thank you for dropping by.